Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is Devil World, brought to us by Nintendo. The game was released in Japan and in Europe, but never made it over to North America due to Nintendo of America's strict policies on religious symbolism. In the game, we take control of Tamagon, a little green dragon who picks up crosses and Bibles in order to gain the power of fireballs. He must also clutch a series of dots in one level, take Bibles back to a hub in order to prevent monsters from escaping, and even has a bonus round where he collects other religious objects. The game is, at its core, similar to Pac-Man, though I have to say this is one of the funnest Pac-Man-style maze games that is available on the NES, or well, in fact, in any system. As Tamagon, you must collect the little dots spread throughout the first levels of a set of levels. Basically, the groups of levels are broken up into rounds, containing three parts per round, before you move on to the next round. The first stage has us gobbling up these dots, in order to do so, we must pick up one of the crosses. There are lots of crosses spread throughout the area, and they only last a short amount of time. When you have the crosses, you can fire fireballs out at the enemies. Defeating an enemy with a cross will allow you to turn them into kind of a weird object that you can then eat for extra bonus points. Along with collecting the dots, you'll see some other times random things like ice creams floating around the screen, and collecting them will net you a few bonus points. Once completing the first stage of a round, you go to the second part, where you must now navigate the same maze you were just in, but now collect Bibles in order to bring them back to kind of the hub in order to stop up where the enemies are coming from. After delivering all four of the Bibles to the center, you move on to the bonus round. The game is one hit death, and you're going to be using those fireballs to try to prevent enemies from running into you. Though enemies only within the barrier, as you can see represented by the large columns on the left and right screen, are able to hit you. When enemies are outside that barrier, you can see they kind of go into a weird state, and then can travel through. And if you walk through an enemy that's currently in that state, they will not hurt you. In the bonus box level, you can actually control the way the screen is pushed and pulled by hitting arrows located on the ground. While the enemies are still working the cranks in the corners, which I think is one of the coolest parts of just the overall screen in Devil's World, there's no devil controlling it as you defeat it, the devil by sealing up that enemy gate at the end of stage 2. In the bonus box round, you have a very strict time limit in order to collect all the objects that are floating. Once you're able to collect them all or time runs out, you move on. Though you do get to keep any points that you gain during the course of the bonus round, so if you're unable to get them all, you'll still net yourself a few bonus points. And you will net yourself bonus extra lives for collecting a certain amount of points. After completing all the stages of a round, you move on to the next round. Round number two, as you can see, does change up a little bit, as the mazes will change up just a bit, and the farther you get in, you'll be seeing the same basic stages, but the speed in which the levels move around definitely will ramp up. Besides, of course, running into enemies that will cause your death, you can be squashed at any time in case the screen ends up going towards you. Now, the way the screen works as far as its movement is it's completely random and controlled by the devil at the top of the screen. It actually can get quite annoying as you're going through because sometimes the devil may just keep forcing the screen left or right and not go up and down, allowing you to get to those last few items that you need to grab, or maybe a Bible or placing a Bible is just out of your reach due to the fact that he won't make the screen scroll the way you need to. It's always best to play it safe. If you think for any chance the screen's gonna stop scrolling and you know you're gonna have to go into a tight space, don't do it, just stay out of it. There's no time limit on the stages, and there doesn't seem to be any penalty for lasting as long as you possibly can. So, as long as you don't die, you can just keep moving around. Now, of course, enemies will keep spawning, so you'll have to keep grabbing crosses or hold on to those Bibles so that you can keep firing the fireballs. Introduced here, though, as you may have noticed, is another type of enemy. Now, these enemies, the Mini Satans, are basically just smaller versions of the Big Blue Devil at the top, but they can't actually be defeated with your fireballs. Instead, when you launch one at them, they change directions and go the opposite way of you. Besides the two enemies we've seen so far, there is one more enemy that's added into the game a little bit later on. After completing the first two areas, round two, we move on to that bonus box stage. The hardest part I usually find is trying to quickly grab the lower left corner of the boxes before I end up going after any of the other ones. So, 
You have to be really quick usually about it, and sometimes you may not be able to because of the way the maze is designed. But if you're able to grab that one, that gives you a nice, like, kind of head start as far as the rest of this whole, like, maze thing goes. And since you're not penalized if you don't end up finding or get all the boxes, it's really not that big of a deal if the time ends up running out. Next up, we move on to round three. Now, one thing I hadn't mentioned yet is you can actually wait at the start of a level as long as you want to before finally breaking out of, like, your egg and then actually going into the stage. So if you want the screen to kind of scroll around a little bit before finally unleashing your character, you can do that. Since there is no time limit, use that to your advantage at all times. Once you kind of get a hang of, like, being able to grab a cross, and then as soon as it runs out, be in a spot where you're going to be able to grab another cross quickly, so you're not really left vulnerable for too long of a period of time, your main focus is just not getting squashed. The enemies, honestly, are the least of the worries, especially early on in the beginning stages, because you can easily take them out as long as you have a cross, and a lot of them just kind of go on their own little paths and stay away from you. The later creature that ends up being added to the game definitely tracks you a bit better than the first two sets of enemies that we end up dealing with, but overall still, it's not that terrible. Right here is a little bit of a risk. I tried to go up that little hallway, but if that screen had started scrolling over to the right, I may have accidentally gotten stuck in squash, so I got lucky with the way the movement worked on that. I have to admit that these levels, I think, are tougher to quickly do than the first levels because you can actually really easily get kind of like stuck in a spot where you're waiting for the screen to just scroll that right direction so that you're going to be able to make it back to that monster base in the center. You're pretty much at the game's mercy, and that's why it definitely gets not just tough, but can get annoying pretty quickly, especially in a level if it just keeps looping over and over again, and not go that one direction you want. I was unable to kind of figure out a way to manipulate the directions. I wasn't sure if there is one where you could kind of like stand in a certain spot, and that'll make the devil move the screen a certain way or not move it a certain way, but I was unable to find that during my playthroughs of the game. Like, right there, another chance, I'm like, nope, I'm not gonna risk accidentally going down there and trying to grab that book, because I would've ended up risking getting squashed, so I'll stay right here, and hope that this screen keeps scrolling just enough, but unfortunately it doesn't, so I'm kinda have to wait, but thankfully, it moves up, I can grab this book, and now I just gotta wait for me to be able to get that last opportunity, so I can deliver this final book. Once again, at the beginning here, I'm just going to go straight south and wait for the book to come to me. Now, I could have tried to go left through a little bit of a maze, but I probably would have ended up getting squashed if I had attempted that. It also doesn't matter, obviously, what order you grab them in, so it's whatever order you think you can grab them and grab them the quickest so you can have the most amount of time. Thankfully, the level ends as soon as you grab that final one or the time runs out, so if you're, like, in a really tight spot when you grab that last book, thankfully, if, you, if that's the last one, you'll just move on to the next level. You don't have to worry about getting squashed. Once you made it over to round four, you'll start seeing very similar patterns as far as the mazes go, and you'll pretty much have a good grasp of how everything works. Also, by the time you've gotten to this stage, you'll also be able to move through the maze a lot quicker, being able to grab crosses easily, and still be able to grab as many dots as possible while holding on to the cross. From this moment on, the screen definitely starts to scroll faster, so you always have to be on your toes. But if you're always cautious about going down a really tight corridor that's right near one of the walls, you shouldn't have too much trouble being able to make it through these levels.
Once again, back at one of the Bible screens here. We're going to grab this book and then just head straight up. Thankfully, the screen is scrolling perfectly, so I'm able to get up here. Though I do run a risk of going into that center where a lot of the creatures seem to just want to hang out there. After grabbing this one in the upper corner, now, thankfully, the monster gate is where I can actually put it. But a good strategy after grabbing one of the books, if you can't get to that monster gate, is to kind of just wait in the center of the screen, in a nice little open area, so that whatever way the screen ends up scrolling, you can kind of get a jump on it, you're not risking getting squashed. Devil's World actually does have a few distinctions. Because of its censorship, it's the only game from Shigeru Miyamoto that never make it to North America. Though it was released in not only, of course, Japan, but in PAL territories. Even getting re-releases on the Wii, 3DS, and the Wii U Virtual Console. But never here, even though we did end up seeing a few of the import-style Virtual Console games released in North America. I guess that censorship is still just running very strong for Nintendo, so they decided not to release the game here. Though, The Devil and Tamagon have actually appeared as trophies and other stuff in the Super Smash Bros. series. So, Nintendo clearly not only acknowledges them in the North American market, but just decided to never release the game here. It's a harmless game overall, and I really don't think any controversy in this day and age will end up coming from this very, very old game. In fact, even if it did, it just probably would mean the game would end up selling better. And even with the censorship, why not just go back and change the sprites, get rid of the cross, get rid of the Bible, and just still re-release the game on Virtual Console? Then again, I guess there's probably not that many people clamoring to get their hands on this game so many years later on. One of the things that can really make the game fun is actually playing in two-player mode. Unlike a lot of the early NES games that had where you would take turns with the second player, first player going first, and then the second player would get a shot at it. However, in Devil World, like similar to Balloon Fight, both players are on screen at the same time. And because of all the perils of the enemies and of course the threat of getting squashed, it makes it really challenging and a lot of fun to try to coordinate with your friend in order to figure out how to get through the mazes as quickly as possible and have neither one of the Tamacons end up getting killed. Now that we've made it into round 6, you'll notice that of course the screen is scrolling a little bit faster, it may change directions a little bit quicker sometimes, it seems like at least, but overall, your same strategies are remaining in place as you probably become a master of being able to grab crosses and eat up all the dots at this point in the game. Since enemies are also seemingly quicker during the course of this, you always have to be ready to grab a cross, so you don't really want to leave yourself vulnerable in an area that has no crosses. And if it comes down to grabbing a couple more dots, or going back to grab a cross, definitely go back for the cross. Crosses, as you may notice as well, don't seem to last quite as long the farther you get in, so you always have to be cautious of that as well.
The Bible stages are definitely a little bit more challenging in order to try to keep a hold of the Bible because you have to, of course, drop it off, but you have unlimited time in order to get it back to that gate in the center. So if enemies are kind of bottling up at one spot, you could hold on to the Bible, go to that spot, take them all out, and then deliver the Bible. And while they're all kind of floating around the screen, you can go and head off and try to get the next Bible. Right here's a little bit of a tricky spot because if that screen starts scrolling the other way, I was going to definitely get squashed. But thankfully, I was able to get out of the way just barely in order to deliver the third Bible here. And now I just got to get the one in the upper left corner. Being stuck, though, in that center spot, since it's really hard, you sometimes have to just run away from enemies like I did there in a kind of a square pattern in order to try to escape. Now what happens in this level during this run is a great example of how this game can completely troll you. No matter what I seemingly do, it will not allow the screen to scroll the way I need it to in order to drop off the final bible of this stage. So I have to keep going left and right back and forth till eventually it finally decides to give me a break and allow me to go up or down. Of course since I already have the bible in my possession, no enemies are really a threat. It just ends up being really annoying that I have to just keep kind of heading one way until the game's finally like, you know what, we, we've messed with you enough, it's time to actually complete the stage. Finally, after what seems like forever, I'm finally able to drop off that last Bible and move on to the bonus round. Thankfully, the game can't really troll me in this stage, since I not only can control the walls, there's also that strict time limit, so even if I can't grab them, thankfully, I can't get stuck in the stage either. Now, when you make it to round 7, this is what introduces the new enemy. These are like the red demon guys. These guys are the same basic ordeal as the other normal guys, but they move quicker, they track you better than the other guys, but you can still take them out with your fireballs. Just like the other enemies, they can go behind the walls so that they're invincible for a period of time, and that makes them unable to hit you as well, so you can always take that to your advantage. From this point on in the game, though, nothing really else changes up. There's no more enemies added, there's really no types of mazes added, just things get quicker and get a little bit more challenging as the game progresses. Though your goals, of course, always remain the same. A lot of the stages and Bible stages especially will also have kind of one of each of the enemies in the game in their stages. And since we made it to this point, we've seen everything that the game has to offer. So after finishing up this stage though, I will wrap up this episode of Play It Through. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up or commenting down below. I apologize, I know my voice is eh this week. I uh, just got back from MAGFest and caught a bit of the convention flu, but hopefully uh, the video turned out okay. Not that my voice is normally that great anyway, but um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Check out another one of the Famicom games I did last week. That is Transformers, whatever you want to call it. It goes by a couple of names. It's kind of weird, but either way, the Transformers Famicom game is infamous for its difficulty and just overall badness. I also need to thank all the members on my Patreon. Your guys' support does keep this channel going. I cannot overstate that enough. I mean it. Your guys' support allows me to keep doing these videos. I also want to thank everybody for their support over the last couple weeks as stuff has been going on in my personal life. 
Um, but thank you guys. There's a reach down and all that. Thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, so thank you guys for watching this video. And of course, I hope you enjoyed.